What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Venosby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guests today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Hey, Hi, Chief. Good excited? to see you. Yes, I am excited. Oh, I'm, I'm super, excited. I'm super excited. Well, so this is, for those that don't know, this is our third Chief Chat for the week. We normally do it one time a week, but this is number three. So we are on a marathon. This is huge. It's yeah. huge. But yeah, if, if we're going to have exception. more than, if we're going to have more than one Chief Chat in a week, you know, we're going to have a huge guest. And so right now we have one of the GOATs of the greatest of all times for the people that don't know what GOAT means. One of the GOATs <laughs> of uh, country music on today's show. And I couldn't be more excited. So Without further ado, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Oh, you're right, Chief. We do have a country music icon with us today. He's a singer, a songwriter, musician, record producer, and an actor. He has an incredible 22 number one singles on the Billboard Hot Country Songs charts. He's also the host of a brand new show called Talking in Circles with Clint Black. So please help me welcome Opry member and Grammy winning country artist, Clint Black. Hey. Hey. So good to be with y'all. Pleasure is ours. <laughs> that's that's a heck of a resume right there, man. I almost fell asleep. At, I almost fell asleep. It was so long. Yeah, you got to <laughs> jump in the hammock for those. Um, yeah, it's it's it seems like only yesterday I got started, but uh, when I think through everything, yeah, it's it's been over thirty years. Yeah, awesome. of, of amazing opportunities. Uh, when you dream of getting in this business, you know it's uh, oh, I want to. I want to be on the radio and I want to have a crew and someone to change my guitar strings. You know? <laughs> and then all these other things happen. You go, well, I never thought I'd be writing a song with Merle Haggard and I never thought I'd be singing with George Jones and all of these. It's it just, uh, you don't get any rest because that all the things you're invited to do are so much fun. You can't say no. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, Clint, we are so honored to have you on. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Share your favorite Clint Black song. Leave your comments and questions for him. We'll read those live. Now is the great time to start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should. Chief Chats are every week. And following us lets you know who's coming up next. Yeah, what's your favorite Clint Black song? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, do you want to know mine? Mine is Good Run of Bad Luck. I love that song and I've had it in my head for weeks now. So thought I'd share that with you. Down to just a one favorite. I can't. They're um, all so good. Yes. I grew up listening to Clint. And so this is just like my childhood dream coming true right now. Uh oh. Don't, listen, don't, don't get emotional yet, Leah. Let, let me say <laughs> <hear> you first. <laughs> So, so Clint, man, it is great to meet you. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today on Chief Chat. Uh, can you tell our viewers where you're calling us from and, and how you've been doing during the pandemic? Uh, I'm in uh, Nashville, uh, been out doing shows uh, again, finally. Um, and uh, just got back uh, home a couple of days ago. Uh, I was down in Texas, got to uh, go back home to Katy for a while and, and uh, uh, visit my family. I get down there uh, quite a lot, and uh, uh, but uh, the pandemic was uh, got in the way of all that. So um, you know, the, we drove 800 miles to Kansas. Uh, all the while, I'm saying, "Is are you sure this show's going to happen?" And yep, this show's going to happen. And sure enough, the uh, county health inspector. I woke up the morning that my bus goes to the venue. I wake up on the bus and and step off and start doing all my show stuff. But uh, I woke up that morning and the first thing I did was look at my text and there it was, you know, the show was canceled. So we let our drivers uh, sleep off the drive and then we got on the bus and headed home. That was March 16th or 17th. And, uh, and put the buses in mothballs and, and <laughs> did these shows for a while. Um, it was, uh, it was devastating to uh, to my industry, uh, which extends all the way from us lead singer guys uh, and gals, all the way to people we never meet who uh, you know sell the tickets, take the tickets, uh, sell our t-shirts and ball caps for us. Um, 
you know, the, uh, the local symphony orchestras, the local bar bands, um, you know, uh, it, it, it reaches out so far, it's, it's hard to fathom really how many people were, were affected, um, you know, by having this, uh, this industry shut down. But we, uh, we kept our hopes up. I changed my uh, booking agent to a rescheduling agent. <laughs> <laughs> About a year was rescheduled. And uh, he did a great job of it. Uh, he, he just kept moving things further down the road. And, uh, and we finally managed to see uh, some shows go by uh, in the last month. It's so exciting. I know it's great for everybody to be to be back working again and to hear live music once again. And you also have a new show. Congratulations on Talking in Circles. It premiered last week on the Circle Network. So tell us a little bit about the show, where it's filmed, and what makes it so special. Yeah, it uh, the guests make it special. Um, the uh, it's it's really a product of losing my day job. You know. I, <laughs> I found myself, I'd had some TV show ideas in the past and, uh, and I, and I, I, I pitched one or two, but I, but I didn't have the time to really, really drive them home. And, uh, and this time I did, and, uh, I got with uh, circle TV who carries our, uh, grand old Opry live and, uh, pitched them the idea of just, uh, what I've been saying for years, which is uh, the conversations that other artists, the artists have with each other backstage, uh, we just, just so many times afterwards, I, I would say, you know, I wish the fans could have heard that, you know, they would have really, really loved that and uh, wish there was a way to share it with them. And, uh, and we figured one out and it's, and it's really just me and, and one guest uh, talking shop. We talk about the things that we would talk about. I, you know, uh, the conversations that are interesting to us, which are, are usually not heard because the people interviewing us um, really don't know uh, what we do, what our life is like on the road, and and sometimes it's hard to to probe. It'd be like, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to ask the chief, you know, uh, but you know, hey. Do you iron your own uniform? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, listening to you talk to, you know, someone else who does what you do. We would hear a totally different conversation, Absolutely. right? Um, so uh, that's really what makes it special is, uh, you know, Darius Rucker and I talking about songwriting uh, with each other. Um, we're, we're, just, we're just talking over in a different corner. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's what makes it special. And it's, uh, we had a limited audience. The audiences will be able to be, uh, bigger on the future tapings. Um, uh, but we had a big enough audience there. We knew when we were funny and <laughs> we knew if, uh, we might be making someone cry. Um, some of the stories, you know, are, are so good and so deep, um, Anyway, it's 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 been a, a thrill for me. It's 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 different being in the position of the interviewer. Yeah. So so you we, we well we got something in common because I kind of lost my day job once the pandemic hit, and uh, that's how we started the Chief Chat. So Chief Chat started after the pandemic because yeah. my, I normally get on the road and I go to all the bases and I, I talk to command leadership and I talk to the associates that uh, at, at the exchange. And so since I couldn't travel, we had to find a way to do some outreach to, to our, our viewers and our patrons and, and, and have awesome guests like yourself uh, showing some love to the military. So I, I, so we got, we got that in a comment. And also to answer your question, uh, my uniform is wash and wear. So all I got to do is wash it, throw it in the dryer and fit it on. So I don't, um, so no, nobody has to iron my uniform. And Great I think question. I'm, I think I'm going camo on the rest of this tour. <laughs> and you had Darius uh, Rucker as I, I believe your first guest. Who who else do you have on the lineup? Who else is can we look forward also, to seeing? Uh, this weekend it'll be Travis Tritt, and Travis and I have known each other forever. And uh, uh, and uh, Steve Warner, uh, Brad Paisley, Sarah nice. Evans, uh, Amy Grant, and uh, Vince Gill. Uh, Keb Moe, 
um, uh, boy, uh, Rodney Crowell. Uh, some of you uh, who've been with country music for a while might remember uh, Rodney and all his hits, um, but uh, uh, Rodney's work goes so much farther than that. Uh, those of us who know him as a songwriter, along with that, you know, artists who have recorded his songs, um, you know, uh, range from Bob Seger to Waylon Jennings, you know, mm -hmm. and on and on. Uh, I'm sure I'm leaving uh, someone out. That's a great lineup. Congratulations. That's really exciting stuff. Can't wait to watch. Yeah, it's, Me too. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, John Rich, um, you know, all of all of whom, uh, you know, I know uh, to some degree socially. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're able to uh, uh, kid around with each other. Um, I, uh, I like to say stupid things. <laughs> Uh, me too questions and uh so uh so it's a lot of fun to do that with people watching and uh i, I enjoy making people laugh and i'll do just about anything uh, at home i dance to make my wife and daughter laugh. <laughs> and, uh, so do you have a tiktok you got a tiktok yet uh, I got, i'm on tiktok you bet <laughs> oh, we gotta TikTok. check that out. <laughs> uh, if you look at an old video of mine called "The Shoes You're Wearing," uh, there's a little bit of me dancing at sound check. Um, uh, a little, a little, tiny little bit of uh, of that, uh, which uh, you can laugh at. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and speaking of this being different, Clint, so throughout your career, you've been on the other end of the microphone for interviews. So what was the adjustment like to now being the one doing the interviews on Talking in Circles? Well, I felt the pressure. I, uh, I, I, I didn't want to over-prepare. I didn't want to, I really wanted it to be a conversation. So the only way to really do that is to go deep dive uh, do the research. I had a researcher uh, helping me, and uh, and so uh, together we just uh, found things that we didn't already know, and uh, and and then tried and then I just tried to to get it going and make it a conversation, and then loosely cover the things I wanted to cover, um, and make sure to to get to those. Uh, but uh, there was always the pressure, and I always uh, like to say, "I'm okay. I'm tensing up now." <laughs> um, but really, it's such a friendly uh, interview uh, that it really wasn't wasn't that hard. But I, you know, I like to tense up anyway. Yeah. So when we do our research for our show. We it's it's funny how much you have in common with people that you don't even realize until you start kind of peeling back that onion and researching and you're like, man, we got a lot more commonality than we do differences. Yeah, that's with, uh, with most people. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's something that, uh, that ties us all together and, uh, you know, things that we all have in common. And then from there, it's, you know, well, you know, I turn this wrench and uh, I turn a phrase or I play a guitar or whatever. But even in that, it's still all, uh, part of the same uh, pursuit. So uh, I think we're all more alike than different. No, absolutely. And yeah. so I I know we talked about before you we went live about your, your endeavors of joining the military, but you had singer's grades. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I know, I, and I had singer's grades too, but I just couldn't, I didn't have a voice. So I had to join, join, join the military, but we, we know you got a huge heart for the uh, our nation's military. Can you share your family's military connection with us? Yeah, my dad served in peacetime. My oldest brother served in peacetime. Uh, my next oldest brother was a uh, deputy constable. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I, I had some, you know, an early childhood uh, idea of what uh, uh, that service was. Um, but I also, you know, my, my heroes were the good guys in the movies. And, uh, um, you know, I'm kind of a history buff. I was a terrible student, but uh, I played catch up and tried to read uh, nonfiction as much as I could. Um, so I understand, um, you know, I understand why we're free uh, to do what we want here at home. 
And uh, I've been overseas. I was in Somalia uh, uh, with the USO. Uh, I've seen what that devastation looked like up close. Uh, so I know the difference between uh, what we enjoy and uh, what others have had to endure. And I know who gave that to us. So uh, it's, it's hard not to uh, love our, our military, our veterans, everyone who you know, from the Revolutionary War on up, um, you know, I had a, a great, 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 great grandfather, um, you know, who served in the uh, Revolutionary War. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's nothing on me, but it just, uh, uh, it just helps me to look back with some perspective, um, you know, if, uh, if I had been a young man during that time, I would have been in the fight, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, and, and even those who weren't in the fight were, were so directly affected by it. Um, when, you, when you take a, a look at uh, what was done and, and what we've gotten for it, um, you know, it's hard to, and, and the, the, other, the other part of it is the, um, and, uh, you know, uh, all of my visits, you know, the USS Harry Truman, the Kitty Hawk, uh, you know, I was over at Camp Bonsteel in, in Kosovo and, uh, you know, in Tuzla and, uh, you know, in Siganella Naval Air Station in Sicily, where my uh, ancestors are from. And, uh, you know, I, I look around and, and uh, I appreciate excellence and I see it, you know, being at Annapolis and, uh, you know, and, and talking to uh, uh, the officers there, uh, the candidates, the, uh, uh, forget what you call them, is it uh, plebes? Anybody know that? Uh, the cadets? Yeah, yeah. yeah the cadets. Um, and, and so, uh, uh, you, you know, I get a sense, I, I, I know what excellence is in, in my business. Uh, but it's something uh, uh, much more impressive in the military, and uh, and so it's it's inspiring. It's um, it's it's thrilling. I've I've been able to meet some, uh, you know, because of what I do, I've been able to meet some of our greatest uh, war fighters, and uh, uh, and I'm amazed at at uh, how little of the battle I see in them. You know, I see their humanity, and I see. Uh, this uh, resilience in their spirit, and uh, uh, it, it really is moving. And so you, you know, you get around that and you want to be around it more. Um, you know, you want to meet these people and, uh, and, and try to um, uh, it just, just try to increase my, uh, you know, insight and understanding. Uh, when I drive around Nashville, in the wintertime, I think about those soldiers bivouacked all around uh, uh, the city during the Civil War. And I think about them sleeping out there on the ground in the Revolutionary War, you know, sometimes without shoes. Um, so anyway, I could go on and on about it, but it, 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 it uh, you know, just exposure breeds uh, the want for more exposure. And your passion for the military is really shining through. We have soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members. We have the whole military community watching live with us from all over the world. Do you have any words of hope or inspiration that you'd like to share with our nation's heroes? Well, I'm, I'm watching what's going on around the world. And uh, uh, I know we're, uh, you know, we're in the, the longest war that our country has ever faced you know, over the last uh, 20 years. And uh, and I watch uh, all of the, uh, uh, the stuff going on here at home. And, uh, and I often hear people say, man, I've just never seen it that bad. And, <laughs> and, I, always, and I always say, well, you know, you got to open a history book because it has been worse. And, uh, you know, there was a, there was a time when uh, I think 25% of our uh, GDP was being spent on a war effort or in World War II. And uh, now we're down in the uh, single digits uh, with that. Uh, not only that, the number of people who are involved in 
uh, military uh, and the military in some way is a much smaller percentage. I think the military is able to do a lot more with uh, a lot less. Uh, the, the sacrifices uh, are still the same to those uh, making it, but a lot more people are able to enjoy the peace they, uh, they guard for us. Um, and, uh, and so uh, I know things uh, uh, have been a lot worse it's easy for me to uh, enjoy this, uh, you know, uh, perspective I have. Um, so I, I offer it humbly uh, uh, that, uh, you know, the world, uh, the conditions uh, are swinging on a pendulum. And uh, I just, uh, I thank God that uh, America is always there to keep uh, pulling on that and uh, trying to keep it uh, moving uh, in the right direction. There's a great documentary if you haven't seen it. Uh, as uh, you know, family, uh, you know, would always ask me, "Why do we have to do this? And why do we have to be there?" And uh, there's a, a documentary uh, called "American Umpire," and uh, and I found that to be really uh, informative. Uh, I uh, always take information with a grain of salt. Um, and don't take it uh, as fact, but uh, some of it I can recognize as, as being true. And, uh, you know, it inspires me to think of what, uh, uh, what America did for the world after World War II. Um, you know, nothing ever was uh, uh, got to be perfect, uh, but uh, I think this, uh, this country and our military uh, did a great thing for the world. Uh, the World War II uh, uh, may have been lost, but for um, our uh, our soldiers and our uh, intelligence uh, agency, and and uh, uh, you know, there's a there's another great book called uh, Second World Wars, which uh, really opened my eyes to just how uh, how much uh, America impacted the uh, outcome of that war. Uh, you know, providing the Soviets with seventy five percent of their uh, uh, war materials <laughs> and, uh, and still, and still doing everything, uh, America did in the, uh, the Pacific and in Europe and, uh, all around the world. So, uh, it's, it's a mighty force. And, uh, uh I think, uh, uh, a force for good. Um, I, uh, I, I push back against anyone who says otherwise, and uh, there are those out there who see the glasses uh, half empty, but I, uh, I not only see it as half full, but I know what's in the glass. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, so that's, uh, that's my uh, uh, perspective and uh, I'm sticking to it. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for that, Clint. So let's talk a bit, a, a little bit about your career. You were a member of the famous country music class of 89 featured artists such as Garth Brooks, Alan Jackson, Travis Tritt, and Lori Morgan, those who made country cool again, so to speak. Uh, what was it like being a part of that movement? It was crazy. It was, uh, <laughs> we were already real excited, uh, uh, you know, to have, uh, uh, Randy Travis and George Strait and Reba McIntyre and uh, Ricky Skaggs, um, uh, just to name a few. We were already excited to uh, have them uh, bringing traditional country music back to the forefront. Uh, when I hit, um, I jumped on, it was like a train going 90. And uh, so I just had to, to grab hold and, and hang on as I tried to manage becoming famous and, uh, and looking around me and seeing all this other great music uh, uh, coming out, uh, artists who were influenced by uh, everyone back to uh, the Carter family and Jimmy Rogers, uh, all the way up to, uh, you know, uh, all the other country acts, but uh, also the, the rockers. A lot of us uh, grew up with uh, the classic rock as well. So uh, having all of those influences uh, come into country music was exciting. Uh, knowing an artist like Travis Tritt, you know, who grew up with the Allman Brothers and Leonard Skinner and all that, uh, bringing, bringing a little of that to country music. Uh, we were having fun, 
but it was uh, it was a rocket ship ride. Yeah. <laughs> we were really uh, just uh, you know out, it was nine cities, uh, you know one one day at a time, one day off, eight cities, one day off. Uh, one time we did uh, twenty one uh, cities in a row without a day off. Oh, uh, along with all the inter all the interviews and photo shoots, magazine covers, and all of that, it's it's crazy when I when I think back on uh, just how hard it was to get through that and still be able to sing those songs. <laughs> it was crazy, but the music was uh, was inspiring. Uh, so many artists, uh, you know, that that were just like one after another. Wow, listen to them and. Uh, uh, it was fun. It was a crazy time. But but at the same time, all these, you know, so, my agent calls and says, uh, so-and-so wants you to be in a movie. And I thought, what an idiot so-and-so is. <laughs> <laughs> what is that person thinking? And, uh, you know, these directors and, and, and I just said, no, don't bring me any of that stuff. I'm, I'm not stupid enough to do that. And then suddenly I was stupid enough. I was on the couch for... Uh, I had like one week, seven days off, and I told my manager, don't even call me. I don't <laughs> want to know what somebody wants me to do this week because I'm exhausted. <laughs> and uh, two days into that, he called and he said, you're going to want to do this. And he was right. It was Maverick. So I Loved was going to be in a Dick Donner movie uh, starring Jodie Foster, Mel Gibson, James Garner, uh, uh, James Coburn, um, and every Doug McClure, every actor I'd ever seen in Westerns growing up uh, who was still alive was in that movie. And uh, um, I, I just, I couldn't believe I went and did that. And then <laughs> my agent, you know, okay, I'll look at other things like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, like I said, you got a super impressive resume. And so um, it's been about a little bit over 30 years since your debut album, Killing Time. So for those that don't know, it had four straight number one singles. So that's, man, that's, that it is was crazy. Five, actually, it was five. And, um, and every time one went to uh, number one, you know, after about two or three, then people started saying, well, but will the next one go to number one? And, uh, and, and then, uh, and then it got to the fifth one. And there were two charts at, at, at that time. So uh, it went to number two on one of the charts, but it went to number one on the other. So we call it a number one. Oh, yeah, let's do got it. You. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, I, I just made the edit. You got five I'm all straight, about that. Five yeah. straight number ones. I usually don't even correct anyone because there's the technicality or an asterisk involved. But um, but it was once that I was the last single off my first album and then the talk really was of course somebody told me oh that this never happened before uh, which i'm glad they didn't tell me before because that would have made me <laughs> really anxious um and and caring you know more but once that happened then the first single off the next album everybody's saying oh will that go number one well it went to number two so uh, it was part of me was relieved that people could stop focusing on what might not happen uh, but it would, <laughs> I don't know that I was completely thrilled. <laughs> it really, it really kicked the door in for me. It, it set me up for, you know, being a part of history. The uh, first two singles were the number one and two single of the year that year at Billboard, uh, which hadn't happened, you know, in 35 years since Hank Williams Sr. with two songs I sang in the bars a million times. <laughs> So uh, uh, Kalaja and your cheating heart. So, so when all this is going on, excuse me, um, I have that happen, and now I have a, an historical connection to Hank Williams. So these things will really make your head spin. And um, fortunately, all the time I was growing up, my friends were telling me I could be a star. <laughs> uh, they would also say, "But don't let it ruin you. You know, you get the big head, and you know." Don't you become a <laughs> jerk? So always in my mind was that, okay, don't let this ruin me, you know. Uh, but it really has the potential to uh, make you think too much of yourself if you're not careful. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. You, like I said, super impressive. So what, what do you think your key 
to success to stay relevant over this many years because you know music changes and audience changes and so yeah. how, how do you how do you how are you still the man uh, in 2021 yeah I, I don't know if i'm the man but i'm one of <laughs> that's all that's all that matters you know is if you can just be one of them yes um, i think the songs really uh, it starts there they all say um uh, but I think you you have to keep getting better at what you do so that when people come and see you in concert, uh, they're not disappointed or they're not nervous for you because you're not pulling it off. Um, so, you know, I never stopped working at sounding better, playing better, singing better uh, and all of that. Um, but, you know, there's also you got to be a professional. You know, I see a lot of uh, young acts coming up and... Uh, you know, they're as uh, drunk as the audience by the end of their show, you know, and, uh, you know, so I always, uh, anonymous, anonymously, I don't tell other people what to do, but for any of you uh, kids out there, anyone aspiring to this, you know, I tell them it's not your party, it's their party, and you need to do a good job of what you do, and, uh, and if you want to know how bad you are when you're drinking on stage, just listen to a board tape from the night before. <laughs> uh, Trace Atkins talks about that. That was the other uh, uh, guest on my show. Trace Atkins uh, talks about that uh, on the show. Um, you know, you, you know, my uncle uh, has always said, "You never know how you look till you get your picture took." <laughs> well, listening to yourself, it, listening to yourself uh, singing on stage if you've been drinking uh, ought to cure you of that. Um, so I think that's that's part of it. You got to collect an audience. You know, you 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 want you want people to come out and have a good time, and uh, and and then come back and see you in a couple of years when you come back around. Uh, but it starts with a song. Uh, people become attached to a song, and they they want to be there live to hear it. Um, and uh, and so being a songwriter. Um, you know that was always key to me is is continuing to write songs um and 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 do a, a you know quality work there and uh, not try to write you know record companies always want hits they want to find you songs and there's a lot of pressure for me to record other people's songs which i never did i heroes of mine i re-recorded -re their songs uh covered their songs but uh um, I always wanted to write songs that weren't necessarily hits. I would always tell the record company, um, I'm going to have a few songs on the album that I want you to ignore uh, because they're going to be, uh, I don't think they'll appeal to the masses. Uh, they're not aimed at the masses. Uh, but those of us who become fans of an artist, uh, we want to hear the other songs too uh, that aren't, uh, uh, you know, don't have the mass appeal that might be coming straight at you, um, you know, but not them. Uh, this is this 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 song really has a a message that that uh, uh, maybe it's a little more narrow. I don't know how to put it, but yeah, uh, I, we all know what they are. I love that song, and my brother doesn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I think I think people have a, a, a enjoyed being exclusive, right? So. If, if they're on the, the song where everybody jumps on the bandwagon and people that didn't even know who you were and now they're jumping on the bandwagon because everybody loves you. But I think they, they like those songs that are, are pretty exclusive. And, and and that's how you test if you're a real Clint Black fan. It's like, if you don't know this song, then you're not a real Clint Black fan. So I think I think that there's some, there's some as a fan, that there's some some pleasure in that to know that you know every, you know, the, the, these songs that are, that, that were awesome, that never made it to mainstream, but that's how you keep your other other folks out of the way. You're like, you know what? You're not a real cut back. Like, <laughs> yeah. We'll let them all in though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you'll get to it someday. One of the things I've I've noticed about myself, and I'm a a big Merle and Willie and Waylon fan and all that, but uh also James Taylor, uh Mark Knopfler, uh his Shangri La album, um, you know, uh Jimmy Buffett. You know, I will I will listen to these and I'll have my favorites and I'll, you know, on CDs, but hey, kids, uh, look <laughs> um, you know, I would jump ahead 
to songs I loved more and, and listen to those. But eventually I would have worn those out and then I'll come back to the ones that I jumped over and then I'll end up wearing those out. The Mark Knopfler Shangri-La album uh, was that way, especially there was one song called uh, Back to Tupelo um, that for some reason I would jump over to get to this other song that was just killing me. Um, and then uh, now back to Tupelo uh, has me and I've got to go back and hear that every now and then. It's funny how that works, how um, your, your mind works or how your heart works when you do connect with the song and what you're saying, you know, skipping over something to get to the next one. Um, but then you go back and you're like, I should have given that one a listen all along. It's, I'm glad I'm not the only one who does that. That's that's cool. <laughs> and, and, and the vinyl records really, uh, you know, back when you had to set the needle down and you might scratch your album up if you lift it up and move it again, you want to set it down once. And those were album experiences. And I would encourage uh, uh, everyone out there to, uh, you know, when you're listening to uh, whether it's Spotify or Apple Music, whatever it is, uh, to start at the beginning of the album, because most of us are trying to create an experience like a movie uh, or a you know, one hour TV show or whatever, where you, you go through a range of dynamics and emotions and textures and uh, uh, we're trying to create that experience, even though we know it's a it's a single song world out there now. We still, uh, those of us who are old school, are trying to create, uh, you know, whatever that length of that album is, that uh, that experience that's all joined together. And vinyl is back. I have a, a teenager, and that's what he wanted for Christmas was. Uh vinyl record player so he loves listening to things on vinyl so it's it's but he also has a spotify but it's coming back it's it's kind of interesting yeah so it has been it's been such a long year for americans and i think we're all ready to kind of get our lives back and enjoy the things that we used to do before the pandemic and live music is such a huge part of that you're taking the stage live again this summer what does it mean to you to be back in front of your fans in that type of environment again yeah, we always uh, work to uh, be grateful that we, we get to get out there and play, but uh, now it's it's uh, so so much more glaring uh, to us, uh, you know, that, that we're still walking around backstage and on the bus, you know, uh, saying, you know, oh, this is great. Yeah. You know, and aren't we glad <laughs> to be back out here again? Um, it, it, it really, and, and seeing the audience, uh, having, you know, full venues, um, it, we're, we're, we're so lucky to do what we do and, and a year of, uh, abstention, uh, has, has just driven that home more. Awesome. And Clint, you've connected with military audiences in the past. In fact, you visited our headquarters in Dallas about 15 years ago, and I remember meeting you. I have proof here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Pictures or it didn't happen, right? Um, <laughs> we like didn't I didn't have social media back then, I don't think. So anyway, I've just got this printed out photo. Um, it's hard to what believe I take 15 years already. I know, and you look the same. I'm not saying the same for myself, but you look the same. <laughs> no, you <laughs> both do. <laughs> no, you both look the same. Um, we just want to pause for a second. We have military, the military community is watching live from all over the world. So I want to share some of those comments with you real quick. Um, Robert says, best real country singer from the 90s. Um, Christina says, State of Mind is one of her favorite songs. Carol says, Expressing Your Own Heart is so beautiful, Clint. Zila says, Thanks for spending some time with us vets and active military. Much respect and much appreciated. Debbie says, I love the fact that you write your own songs. And um, Lauren says, have loved you since I was a child. Thank you for being one of the great ones. Your, ly your lyrics are so inspirational. Um, Klaus says, Clint Black, my first country record in 1990. And he's given you lots of those symbols. <laughs> <laughs> this one too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Whitney, Whitney, this one's good. Whitney says, you were the man, are the man, and always will be the man. So, <laughs> See, I got it right. And uh, then true. Chris Ward from Dallas says, killing time, the soundtrack of my college years. 
lots of people sharing their favorite songs. Lots of people saying Killing Time is their favorite. Um, Do you see the comment from Stephen Butler? I don't and see that one. I, so Stephen says, thanks for your post. Sitting here in the hospital and you are helping me with the stress of not knowing. So you're you're touching lives here wow. today, just like you always do. That's awesome. Excellent. Thanks for pointing that one out, Julie. We, hey, we're praying for you, oh, Stephen. No soon, Stephen. Yeah. Any yeah. other ones, Julie, that I might have missed? No, no you I, you you got them. Um, Brenda loves seeing Clint Black in concert twice, and and enjoyed it both times. And wish he would come to New Mexico again. So. You, uh, you're wanted in uh, New Mexico. So you keep, keep an eye at clintblack.com forward slash tour. Uh, we have uh, announcements coming soon uh, about the tour. Of course, we're out there now doing some other stuff, but we have a special tour announcement coming uh, right around the corner. And uh, Excellent. You, may, you may just want to know about that in New Mexico. Stay That's tuned. all I'm saying. What about Dallas? Julie, yeah, when you coming might, back to this, Dallas? Julie, this yeah. might be a cheap chat outing. <laughs> when am yeah. I coming back to Dallas? Uh, soon, right? Announcement soon. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I tend to get to Dallas pretty regularly because, you know, there's just so many people there. You're going to have uh, an abundance of country fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes. Texas, Texas, you know. Yes. Uh, don't Say no more. <laughs> Leslie, I want to share this. Leslie says till the end of time is her favorite. And I love that one too. Oh, so wow. just want to say good one. That's good one, Leslie. My wife, Lisa. Yeah, no, we, we, uh, I wrote that after we did the mask singer and, uh, everyone around us say, you know, you guys should, uh, record another duet, maybe with one of those songs you did on the, on the show. And, uh, and I finally said, no, I should, I should write us another duet. And I'd already written several for us. And it took me about a week of beating my head against the wall, not knowing what am I going to say now? And, uh, um, you know, because we're coming up on uh, our 30th anniversary in October. And, uh, and you know, I, I, we had just recorded a while back a song called uh, You Still Get to Me, which was my way of, uh, you know, saying, uh, you know, still love you and, you know, you Aww. still are gorgeous and uh you know pretty dress or old blue jeans and all that and uh Aww. i didn't know well, where do i go from here and uh and finally the first line of the song popped into my head and i and i was pretty sure i'd never heard that line before and it really set me up for what the song would be about and it was uh i can tell you how the story never ends <laughs> And uh, and I knew, okay, I know what it's about now. And I'm a big uh, ponderer of uh, infinity, uh, both from uh, time and space, and uh, and just what that means. Uh, so eternity. Uh, the other line is, you know, uh, you know, uh, the I close my eyes and suddenly the world can be so small and eternity is no big thing at all <laughs> which always I, I had to tell lisa i said is that stupid you know no that's good <laughs> that's good stuff and that's Very what's why y'all have been married for so long if you're churning right. out those kinds of lines that's that's fantastic and you mentioned the mass singer and i'm so glad you did because we were going to bring it up anyway um love the mass singer loved you and lisa as the snow owls what was that experience like thanks it was crazy. It was <laughs> just crazy. You know, they, they, uh, they showed us a uh, one costume idea and we, we didn't love it. And they came back with the snow owls and, uh, and it was just, yeah, Lisa cried, I think. And so that was, that. and, uh, and then we got there and, and saw the costumes in person and, uh, and she cried again. I laughed. And, uh, and then we put them on and, uh, uh, and, and realized, you know, it's a sweat box. And yeah. So, so then we get in that egg and now we're in a sweat box and we can only move our feet this much at a time. And uh, so it oh, took no. a while to get used to moving across the stage to get in position in that. They had all <laughs> kinds of movement for us to do. And we finally said, no, we can't do that. You know, we're like Fred Flintstone moving the car along here. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, uh, and so, so then, you know, uh, being able to see, 
and all of this uh, going on and, and, and singing, uh, it was really challenging. And, uh, you know, and it was like, uh, you know, going into hot yoga, you know, every time we put those <laughs> on. Um, uh, but it was, uh, it was still fun, uh, you know, with all that said, and uh, great to have a challenge like that. I, I tend to look for things uh, that are going to be challenging, Celebrity Apprentice. I did a, a stand-up comedy once on a, a celebrity TV show. Oh my goodness! So, wow, uh, yeah, you are literally doing everything. I really, I really look back sometimes and go, "Yeah, what an idiot! Why'd you do that?" You know, I had no idea what I was getting into on Celebrity Apprentice because I had only seen bits of the show. And I called Trace Atkins, who had uh, won the year before, said, "You know, what? What do I expect? What? Tell me what's going to happen." Oh, you'll be fine. You know, <laughs> that's a great impression. Sounds like it, it is. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, but the masked singer, uh, the one thing I'll say, uh, as far as uh, TV productions go, the torture was really in uh, in the in the costume and uh, and the, the challenges with that. Uh, but the the people running the show are the best. They're the best oh. of the best um you know uh the uh the costume designer uh the producers uh it was a really really great experience awesome so uh like i you, like i said you keep naming more stuff that you've done in your career so like i said we got to update our our resume tracker of of uh clint but uh we we heard that you got something special brewing uh lately uh <laughs> and so I almost did. There that. you go. Bam. So uh, tell us about <laughs> tell us about Clint Black's Cowboy Coffee and how your, your business started booming. Yeah, this is another uh, a result of losing my day job. Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine was in the uh, coffee business in the hospitality uh, uh, area, and uh, and he and, and he and I used to laugh about black coffee, Clint Black coffee. <laughs> uh, he said, you could get into the coffee business and uh um and so we we finally uh started actually uh uh looking at it seriously and uh uh and and i i just decided i i'd, I'd just do it humbly and 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 sell it online i uh i used to uh, give it out to my friends and uh, family at christmas and then I decided I'll, you know, they loved it so much. They, you know, I would, I would always, you know, get calls and emails, you know, where do I find this under your tree? That's it. <laughs> the only place you'll find it. And so, um, so I decided I would just go into the coffee business and, um, you know, right now it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a premium blend and it's fresh. We keep, uh, we keep uh, stocked up only at uh, what we need to fulfill our orders weekly. So this stuff is being ground. You can get a whole bean too, but we got dark and medium roast. Uh, ClintBlackCoffee.com, and uh, and so right now, uh, you know, it's uh, it's sixteen dollars a, a twelve ounce bag, which. Uh, it's not on the, the high end, but it's getting up there. We, we haven't been able to scale it yet, but uh, if you order two bags or more, it's free shipping. And I feel so much like uh, I'm about to tell you about your uh, car warranty here. <laughs> it's fired and you need to press one. Uh, you get those calls too? That's oh amazing. Gosh, That's you know, amazing. This, this is not only best. do I get those calls, but I talk to them. And I keep them on the phone for as long as I can. Before I, I have no uh, interest in buying what they're selling. And I've been cussed out by the best of them. <laughs> wasting their time. And, uh, but, but I will, I'll just, I'll just talk to them and talk to them and oh, hang on. Can you hang on one second? I'll put the phone down. And, uh, and I just keep them tied up. So that hopefully they'll they'll say you know put the word out to all of their cohorts. Don't call that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself on a list. That is awesome. the best. That's the best. Well, you made one person happy because Liz was really interested in where to get that coffee. So uh, uh, she now knows she can get it at Clint Black 
clipblackcoffee.com. But Carol says, it's good coffee. I'm hoping Santa sends me some this year. Oh, Santa can. <laughs> you know, uh, all you have to do is pay Santa. And, <laughs> and, uh, the and cups it'll show up. Uh, I think in about three weeks, we'll have the K cups uh, as well. So oh, that's, that's exciting. actually what, what I like because, you know, uh, one day I'll measure too much and one day I'll measure not enough uh, of coffee <laughs> in the spoon. And I'd like for somebody just to measure that for me. <laughs> um, I'm lazy that way. Do you hand deliver? I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I will hand. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the UPS guy, right? You'll I'm hand deliver it to the UPS guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we started selling these at the show. And it has a uh, one-way valve on it, by the way. And and several times a day i just have to <laughs> mm, i love the smell coffee. of coffee they're not great that I'm hooked or anything no not at all <laughs> uh, there's a uh, sketch on the back that steve warner did for me oh that's oh, cool that oh is. my gosh right? that's awesome he, he did that in about uh four seconds oh my so, gosh wow we hate, we hate him he's so talented <laughs> <laughs> steve warner uh, I, I, uh, he, we were FaceTiming the other day and, uh, and he, uh, he was taking me around and showing me some of the paintings. He's, he's got about 14 galleries worth of paintings and he doesn't sell oh, wow. them. And I told him, I said, you know, people, especially your fans, uh, but, but, uh, art fans would love to have some of those paintings. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> uh, he does watercolors. I have a couple of Steve Warner watercolors hanging up in my house. And, um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I said, Steve, can you do a, like a sketch? He goes, Oh, send me a photo. And there it is. Man. That's so cool. Yes. Yeah. Legit. That's awesome. you believe that? That's going to that's gonna be somebody's tattoo. That's going to be somebody's <laughs> tattoo here in the next probably two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You heard it here on Chief Chat. <laughs> yeah, just uh, put it somewhere decent where you can <laughs> check back with us soon. We'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, Clint. I, some places, uh, some tattoos you don't want to see without a plastic shield. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a very true story. That, that's Chief Chat after dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, when I first heard about this, I thought it was cheap chat. And I thought, <laughs> well, I can do cheap chats. I can be cheap. Yeah, and we're, we're frugal. We we're frugal here. Have a thief. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, Clint, we have had a terrific time with you. You have kept us Thanks. laughing and had good conversation. So, but before we say goodbye, where can our viewers go to find out about Talking in Circles with Clint Black? see your summer tour dates and order your coffee well clintblack.com is uh is the best place to go um i tried to get georgestraight.com but it was taken <laughs> <laughs> clintblack.com um and uh we can direct you it's on circle tv the new show uh clintblack.com will take you to everything music touring t-shirts uh, uh all of that and uh uh, clintblackcoffee.com will get you uh, awake in the morning. <laughs> uh, I almost reached for the act. I'm not going to show you the bag. Uh, you can. Go ahead. This has been a lot of fun. You guys are fun. Uh, I love that this is uh, who this is going out to. Uh, all of our military families uh, and, uh, and those serving. Uh, we love you. Uh, we appreciate uh, uh, the, the peace we're enjoying. Here at home and uh you're in our prayers every night oh that's awesome awesome and so yeah and i'm gonna be looking for for clint black on tiktok so i can see these dances that you got going on so, <laughs> so uh, you awesome. won't see me dancing on tiktok but that shoes you're wearing video okay uh, there's a funny moment in there but on tiktok uh, uh there's some good stuff i can't even remember everything i did now but the first one i put up was uh uh, I called it Tic Tac, and my daughter would always correct me. So uh, <laughs> that's what I call it. No, I've got the Tic Tacs right here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, we, we got some good Tic Tac stuff. Okay, awesome. So, Clint, yeah. man, it's been a true honor having you with us today. 
like I said, the conversation was great. It, we could we could talk to you all day, but I know you got a lot of stuff to do. I know you're a busy man. So uh, I just want to thank you for spending some time with us today uh, and, and sharing your highlights of your impressive career. Uh, you, you went from, you know, singer, songwriter to to come uh, stand up comedian to barista to, to everything, man. So you you got everything in between. So I, I, I appreciate you, man. We, we, we love you. We, we support you. Uh, thank your family for their service. Um, and, and, and just all you have done throughout your career, throughout your life to, to support the military uh, warfighters and their families. So thank you for that. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Love you. Be safe. Um, uh, get out there and enjoy seeing people's faces where you can. Um, uh, the, the, the power in this right here. Oh, yeah. Seeing it on other people. You don't know uh, how much it means until it's gone. Uh, I enjoyed this. I could talk to you guys all day, too. Uh, but now I have, to, uh, I have to record some uh, promos for that uh, tour announcement. <laughs> We're standing by. Come yes. to Dallas. We'll come. Leah and I will be there. We'll come see you. You won't be able All to right. get rid of us. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, and we'll, before... we'll be that crazy blonde brunette duo up in the front. <laughs> yeah. And, and bef uh, before you go, uh, I'll, I'll get with your folks, but I want to give you my own personal military challenge point. I'm sure you got a thousand of them uh, from from you know, doing the military, but I just want to add one more to your collection. So, yeah, I want to get that. Thank you. Absolutely. So I, I'll, I'll give you have too many of those. Those Was are that? I can't have too many of those. I hand them out myself, but mine are uh, cheap uh, plastic ones. We call, <laughs> we call guitar picks. Oh, okay. I thought wow. you were going to say like a quarter. I thought you were going to say quarters. <laughs> I've got a challenge nickel for you. <laughs> You know, inflation and all. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Clint, man. We appreciate you. It was an awesome interview. Uh, and and have a, have a great day. Um, and, and Chief Chat out. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Chief Chat out. Bye. Bye.